Here we go. Well, I hope that you're all having a great Sunday morning. You know who we are. You know what this is. And we're back. Wayne, you were telling me about some weird weather in Denver. You guys lost 63 degrees in 24 hours. And you had a hoo kubu, shubu. What was that uh, thing called? Yeah, yeah. They call it a haboo, a, a dust haboo. storm. Yeah, yeah. Made some for great pictures. I got some pictures of the sun that it just blew the sun up. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Um, Why would it blow the sun up? Well, because you got dusk uh, particulates in the air, and that magnifies the horizon. Hmm. That's interesting. That's mm -hmm. interesting. You, and did it, um, I mean, was it like you see in the movies from the desert? or? Yeah, I mean, we were down to a quarter mile visibility here in Highlands Ranch. No kidding. So it didn't actually come into your yard and stuff, though, did it? It was all over. It was in the air. Uh, you could actually see it the way that the sun was hitting. It looked darker, obviously, uh, to the north and to the uh, east. But, yeah, it was quite a sight. And then, hell, the bottom dropped out. We got down to eight degrees here at my house. I think officially it was nine. But, yeah, damn cold. Wow, that is cold. Well, Wayne, let me be the first to wish you happy World Mental Health Day. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did. I, I needed that. <laughs> what a place to be celebrating World Mental Health Day. World Mental Health. That I mean, so what do we do with it? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking that that term mental health means a whole lot of different things to a whole lot of different people. We got we got people within our government building a whole coup, a whole new yeah. government based on mental health. You would think that, I think that the government, if you ask them to define mental health, that means that we do what we're told and do what they say and just uh, keep, you know, running on the hamster wheel so those fat <laughs> cats can continue to have their agendas forwarded. Oh, it's nuts. Uh, but, you know, could you imagine, I mean, asking a politician about their mental health I mean, that's like going in the insane asylum and asking, is there anyone here sane? That's interesting. You know, they should have, why don't they have some sort of a basic mental health check before you're allowed to run for president? I think they ought to have one before you run for Congress and then find out if they actually know civics. Because <laughs> <laughs> wow. most of them don't know uh, civics. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you got one cat out there, this, you know, obliterating the Second Amendment. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. California, what they passed this week, um, the United States is headed for a full-on police state. And I predict it'll be here the way things are currently going in less than 60 months. Really? Yes, sir. Hmm. Every citizen in a police state. How would you define a police state? A police state is where basically you are constantly tracked. And now what makes this surveillance police state even more, how shall we say, uh, menacing, is that they're going to be using AI. They're going to be using robotics. Um, I think that we're just that close. The technology is here. We're seeing it in China. And uh, as China goes, so does the world. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting, interesting uh, thought. Uh, of course, that would require that President Trump would be removed. Uh, you know, I did a, uh, on my Steiger Perspective show, I gave my make-believe scenario. It took me hours to write this, but my make-believe scenario of what's going on and oddly enough when i did we had technical difficulties two weeks ago i was cut off in the middle of this mm -hmm. what i had wrote what i did on thursday night five events happened in my make-believe scenario in reality interesting would you ask the rods i'm just i was i was getting ready to yeah, yeah. um Listen, when you've got members of Congress who came out in last Monday and said in the press that they're meeting in secret committees and determining how to arrest high-level Trump 
uh, administration officials, which I believe goes all the way to the president, vice president. I told Rex Bear on his show two years ago, watch Pence. Mm -hmm. Because the road that we're heading down now, the 25th Amendment, um, Rothenstein said in an interview with CNN that he had two cabinet members. He had Kelly and he had Sessions ready to trigger the 25th Amendment. Hmm. If my memory serves me, those two aren't there anymore. Yeah, but, you know, the point is, is that that is the definition of a coup. Well, there's no doubt that they're definitely attempting a coup. I don't and think attempt. I think they are. Well, they can they can try. I mean, you can you can try to have a coup. That doesn't mean you can have one. But I would, you know, they can meet in committee all they want, and they can do all they want. I will I will sit back and watch and see what happens when they try to get past U.S. Marines to enforce illegal actions. That'll be fun. You're you're counting though that the military is going to go with Trump. I absolutely am. I don't think so. Okay. I, I, well, it'll be interesting to see where we are to have this discussion in the new year and have the discussion next we will. summer. And yeah. my only point of that contention is, is go back to, um, 2011 and look up in specifically, I think it was the wall street journal. One of the, it was, in fact, it was on all the publications. Obama did a mass firing of all the generals that had been previously with the Bush administration. He put in his own people. These are the very ones that are cooperating with the CIA in this coup currently going on. And I find it very interesting. There is a publication that you can get called defense1.com. Uh, I've been reading it all week. The Pentagon is not backing this president. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. But uh, go there, Jeff. Jeffrey, you can get the uh, daily easing that they put out. Uh, the whole thing going on in Syria has got the Pentagon spinning. I mean, well, of course, yeah, the warmongers I mean, are, there's no doubt that both sides are very, very upset with Donald Trump. No doubt. Yeah. He's shutting off the, he sh he's killing the goose that lays the golden eggs. He's waging peace and not war. And you can't make no money on peace, Wayne. No, no. I mean, it's just like you can't make money on a uh, a cure. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got a, I got an email today from, uh, and this isn't our good friend Nigel is in the chat room right now. He uh, is not saying that this is true, and I don't think it is because number one, where it comes from, and you haven't heard anything about it. I it's it's a an email from the very dubious. It's a, a a story on the very dubious before it's news. And they're saying that, um, and it's so funny, Obama executed by firing squad at Gitmo. <laughs> it gets even funnier though. Listen to this part as you read on, as you read on. And it's so funny. This person's headline is Obama executed by firing squad at Gitmo exclamation point. And then as you read down through, it says about the fourth or fifth paragraph, I have no idea if any of this information is true. <laughs> I'm not saying it is true. I'm just reporting what this field McConnell says. So it's, it's like a whistleblower thing. But then um, here it is. If Obama was executed for treason, then we can only hope that he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior before he was dispatched. <sighs> Jesus is the only hope we have. You deny him, he denies you to the Father. This on World Mental Health Day, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I deny Jesus. He never existed. The, you know, I, I challenge any person who believes that, tell me who Paul preached in. What name did Paul pre preach in? If Paul even lived. There's more evidence that Paul lived than this cat called whatever his name was. And that's very sketchy, too. It's very sketchy. I mean, you know, this, this is the problem. This virus, and I, I call it the Jesus virus. They said Isn't it, in, it funny that we're talking about World Mental Health Day and we're back to Jesus? <laughs> yeah, because, because that <laughs> is the source of all the insanity on this planet. It is. It is the exact, it is the virus, and it's driving us nuts. Uh, by the way, stars it's and stripes. It's a blood-borne virus. It is. Um, 
I was kind of surprised to hear there are several admirals and a number of generals who are self-admitted members of the Satanist church. Several admirals and generals who are self-admitted members of the Satanist church. Do you know that the Satanist church now is officially part of the religious part point for the military? Oh yeah. They have uh, chaplains that are part of the church of Satan. Yep. And they have Wiccan, they have mm-hmm. Wiccan priest. Um, I find this very interesting that the military is suddenly becoming very awake. <laughs> I mean, this is. I think even back when I was in, there was a, there was a, a Satanist priest that was a chaplain, if I remember correctly. But that doesn't really bother me. It doesn't bother me a bit at all. I mean, I think I mean, it brings. They're balance. all. I mean, they're all. I mean, I don't mind if I have Mother Goose on the shelf, Grimm's fairy tales, and you know, comic books. It's all. Everybody can bring their their own little stories if they well, want. Whatever makes them feel better and keeps them in line. I love that because that's exactly, you know, when I hear this whole thing about Satan and the devil and, you know, and I'm going, so let me see, the whole universe is set up on this very primitive, primitive basis. So all reality is that the devil. And, you know, the thing when I left Christianity, Jeffrey, I I remember having this discussion with my small little group. I said, here's the problem, folks. We sit here week in and week out. We pray in Jesus' name. We ask God to please bless us and protect us from the devil, the Satan. And I said, here's the problem. It's obvious that if this cat, because at that time I hadn't studied it deep enough, I said, if Satan is, then he is the God of everything. Because this God is absolutely powerless. I mean, then why, why pray, God protect us from Satan, please, please, you know, when, when, they're, when they're, they're, they're a joint partnership. Yeah, it's silly. It really it is. is. I'm sorry. You get me off. It, it's just that I see, I had a discussion with someone yesterday, and they are so indoctrinated, Jeffrey. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't talk to them. It's World Mental Health Day, Wayne, <laughs> and people don't want to be unindoctrinated. They like having someone to tell them what to believe in. Why else would, if you go, let's just stay in the truth or quote unquote realm, which I hate that word. I won't say I'm part of it anymore, but just stay in the truth or realm on YouTube. In the truth or realm on YouTube, probably at least half of them, if not more, would say that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Mm Mm-hmm. So and they can under, yeah, they can understand why the CIA is bad and why FEMA is bad and why the FBI is bad and why the NSA is bad. But all of a sudden, you cannot look at the BIBLE. You cannot use the same deductive reasoning. You can't subject, subject it to the same investigation as you can all these other places. Is that anything other than crazy? That's a lack of mental health. It's insane. It's insanity. It is. It is. But when all these people that will say, oh, Jesus, 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 then there's the fake ones that say, we're not really Christians, but we're still saved by Jesus, which is very interesting. I don't understand. And I don't spell. Why do people keep following them, Wayne? People right now in this chat room follow some of those channels. And we have the smartest chat room on YouTube. And yet some of these people are still following Jesus centered crazy people. You know, that's why I, 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 which makes you crazy. I think it does. It does make you crazy. That's why I separated myself from this whole planet X Nibiru crap. Oh, that's a good good thing too. Because it it, 99% of it is all predicated. Jesus is coming back. These are the signs of the last days. You've got to accept Jesus into your life. What the freak are you talking about? You're saying that celestial events that you can't even prove, that somehow this is all being motivated by a devil and by Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that this is a great is, controversy, Wayne. Yeah, it is. And you know what? That's the problem. It's a religion within itself. Oh, it is, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It, it's an evangelistic tool. They, they get you all hyped up by seeing the pictures and they start telling you about this. And then the end, it's just like an altar call. It is. It's funny. Uh, Nigel just said, Everything is a lie in the truther community. 
<laughs> Except the Bible. <laughs> Except the Bible. And this is still <laughs> Alex Jones's problem. I mean, Alex Jones has had a, a rebirth. I think he's had a reset. I think he's back to a very close, uh, really exactly where he was at his beginning. So he's really had a, a good rebirth and a rebrand of himself. But he still can't get past that Jesus thing. And it's a third rail he won't touch. No, and no. I just wish I could get on that show and just ask him, Alex. Right to examine. I keep. I've. I've been bugging him forever. I'm gonna start again. We, Alex, we investigate everything. Why not a book that was written by the Romans, changed by the British, the two great new world orders, the two great one world governments? Why can't we look at it objectively? Why can't we study it? Why can't we ask questions? I wish, you know, you bring up a good point because Alex started on the deep state. I lived in Austin when Alex was on cable access and getting started. Um, you know, that's his forte. And he, I, I love the angle that you're going on. That's really, he's a, always been Jesus stuff. He's, he's got yeah. the Jesus juice. Yes, he does. Yes, he and does. There really is Kool-Aid, whether it's literal Kool-Aid or not, but there really is Kool-Aid and these people <laughs> really drink it. <laughs> yeah, you know the story was that the uh, the Jesus turned the water to wine. It was Kool Aid, folks. Oh, Wayne, that's beautiful. <laughs> Jesus did not turn the water to wine; he turned it into Kool Aid. That's all he did. And but I know smart people, smart people oh, that are yeah. sending money to these charlatans. They're making great trips to go to conferences by these charlatans. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. And here's the here's the big question. The big question is, of all of the, we'll just call them Christian truthers, that's who they're supposed, that's who they think they are, but neither, they're neither, really. I guess they are Christian, but they're not truthers. How many of them know that it's a con, or how many of them are crazy themselves? Mm. <laughs> that's a good question. People you know, are afraid to deny Jesus, like Wayne Steiger just did. I deny Jesus. Jesus is a lie. Jesus was never real. I have cast Jesus and all of the Tulpe named Jesus out of my life, out of my existence. And if Jesus is so big and bad and powerful, he knows where to find me, but he still hasn't showed up. Let's just be honest. If you have the truth, and you're telling me that you cannot convince humanity in 2,000 years that you have the truth, then I think you don't have the truth. That's right. I'm just asking people to vote for Trump and give me four more years, and I'll get it done. <laughs> it won't take me 2,000. Give me four more years. Well, that's Obama and the president of, you, of Russia, right? Let me get this 2012 thing under the way, then you and I can talk. Exactly. Give me four <laughs> more years. Yeah. <laughs> This anyway, guy, Wayne, I've been doing a lot of, I'm, I'm actually in the midst of writing two books and I've been doing a lot of videos about the sixties false flag. And it's not so much about, you know, Elvis mind control, Paul is dead, Kennedy, even though all that stuff is interesting, Manson. The thing that I have realized is that they developed all of these MK ultra mind control techniques. Then they tested them on prominent people and found out this shit works. And now they've been using this stuff they learned on us. So it's important for us to learn what they did and how they did it. Did something just walk by Wayne? Um, yeah, this is <laughs> something that actually did. Actually, I thought I saw you, I saw you see it. <laughs> yeah. I went, what the freak was that? <laughs> was it Jesus? <laughs> well, no Jesus. <laughs> but Wayne, there is a Jesus. It, but oh, there, yeah. There's probably many Jesus. You can't have that much intention being oh, put no. out in the universe without a tulpe being created, a tulpa being created. I'm reading a book called uh, Create a Servitude, uh, a servitor, excuse me. Servitor, yeah, be careful, Wayne. Yeah, servitude. <laughs> oh, very close, aren't they? And uh, yeah, we did. We created this cat. Mm -hmm. So um, there really is a, there's many Jesus tulpa, and it's funny, mm -hmm. if you saw American um, gods, they had a show where all the Jesus that showed up, there's a whole bunch of them. It Did you see that? Hilarious. Oh, yeah, it was hilarious. That was fun. <laughs> all a bunch of Jesus is walking around. And there's a bunch of Satans. Yeah, yeah, they really are. I mean, and listen, I think when people die, I think they really go into that temporary realm. I think because they're, that's what they're prepared for. I'm surprised that the... Um, Democrats haven't tried to get the Jesuses and the Satans to register to vote. 
give them time. I mean, you know, they could win the election. Well, listen, they've already. Wait a minute. Jesus already voted. Well, I'm not that Jesus. I'm this Jesus. Oh, it's another Jesus. I am Jesus. (laughs) I'm not Jesus. I'm Yeshua. I'm not Yeshua. I'm Yeshua. Yeshua. Yes, yes. And here in Colorado, one of the things that they learned, the Democrats from the Democrats in D.C., the Democrats have a very effective spiritual uh, outreach policy because the dead all vote Democrat. That's right. So they must have, they must be theosophists, the, de- I mean, the Democrats. I think they're standing on the other side going, Democrat, Democrat. Democrat. Why do the Democrats all vote? All the, dead, the dead Democrats vote, all dead people vote Democrat. Yeah. Tracy said they're bringing Jesus over the border to vote. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. Now that's funny. That it is, is funny. funny. That is funny. Yeah. So. I mean, so that's why, you know, you can believe that the spiritual realm exists because they still vote. Yeah, it's like, and thank you, Jesus, for this food. Amen. Amen. And then so, somebody in Mexico says, de nada. <laughs> so, so you're praying to a Jesus and you're using raw amen, uh, an Egyptian god, to close it with. That's black magic. It is. Thank you. You are thank entering you. into black magic every time you worship Jesus. Yeah. And think about it. How did you get to be one of Jesus's people? You sold him your soul and got covered in his blood. How is that anything other than the occultic, satanic, sacrificial nonsense that it is? Obviously, how did it, how did they ever, Wayne, how do you sit in a room and say, I mean, you've been in advertising. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have them come down. We're going to have them give their soul. We're going to have them ask two entities to possess them. Then we're going to have them cover themselves with blood. Oh, but wait. Then we're going to have them eat, eat, drink blood and eat flesh. Oh, you forgot the last part. What? And then they pay for it. And then they pay us money. Yes. You would say that'll never work. Oh, (laughs) it's the best con ever. I mean, and they give. Oh. I've been in some. But they will of, swear that they are not into. We don't believe in human sacrifice. Really, we don't believe in cannibalism. Really, what do you call it? Oh, how about the blood worship? I mean, oh, it's all about the blood. I mean, I, I, I've I've read some pretty stout. Drinking books. blood and eating flesh is satanic, even if it's done in your church or in your freaking little cult. Oh, now they got ones, Wayne, join this mailing list and you'll get all of the insights. You'll get insights from the anointed one and the other anointed one. And we'll use this list to help build community living as tribulation days approach. <laughs> I had somebody sent it to me. I read it with my own eyes. <laughs> so, we so won't the mention idea, the group because right, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Is that this is supposed to make you feel happy, happy, joy, joy. Uh, that, that's the reason for the religion. It's World Mental Health Day, Wayne. Exactly. So I'm thinking Ren and Stimpy, you know, that got the, 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 the dance going on in my head. But then I'm thinking about this whole cult thing called Christianity. And I'm going, the whole thing is predicated on death. Yeah. And then there's these idiots that spent thousands of dollars for a shoe filled with holy water i paid thirty thousand dollars for a jet that i never got to ride in Mm, how about that yeah who's the dummy here (laughs) (laughs) i mean i had the word sucker you know tattooed on my head i just couldn't see it you gave 30 grand he never got a ride i never got a ride in kenneth copeland's jet no dude you should have got a ride at least i mean you know (laughs) <laughs> Did you even get to see it or touch it? No. Didn't no. they get to sit in it? You know, I could get a NetJet card for thirty grand and get 25 hours of, you know, flying in private jets around, you know, wherever I wanted to go. So that's jets, timeshare jets, huh? Uh, net jets, yeah. yeah. For 30000 you get 25 hours? About 20. It depends on which jet you, uh, in the ranking. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can actually get yourself to a Falcon or all the way up to, you know, Citation 10 or G6. Wayne, how many people will go to church after they watch this show? <laughs> well, I think that they're probably going to go, 
What happened to us? Could there be a class action suit for us to get our money back from Christianity? You know, I think you're on to something because we can prove it is a con. And by the way, listen, I, I spent 10 years of my life building apps for this industry. The, the church in the United States takes in a hundred billion dollars in each year. That's a minimum. Sometimes it's 150 billion, sometimes it's a lower, but it's, it wor works out to about a hundred billion dollars a year is what Americans give to churches. Wow. Now, according to the FBI, what we have, nearly 15% of that is stolen by church personnel. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So when you begin to look at these ministries like Joyce Myers, she has a compound right there in Fenton, Missouri. Who bought that? Does she? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a compound. It literally is. You got the same thing at uh, Eagle Mountain uh, Lake uh, outside Fort Worth. That's the Copeland's uh, compound. Uh, you got the same thing with Creflo Dollar, the same thing with Jesse Duplantis, uh, all of them. And, you know, the Catholic Church is even in more trouble. Now, here is an interesting thing. I predict the Catholic Church will declare bankruptcy in the sex scandal that they've agreed here in Colorado to pay whatever the arbitrator determines. Yeah, if, the, if all of these pedo, pedo things go through, it could bankrupt even the Catholic Church. Yeah, literally. As much money as they have. Yes. So the church will be selling pot pretty soon, you know. Oh, there you go. I'm telling you. Holy weed. Yes, it's coming. I'm coming. Listen, AI God is already here. We have AI priest. Oh, do they have AI priest now? Yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, Well, at least you don't have to worry about getting buggered by one of them, I wouldn't think. They're stationary, right? Well, it's AI. It's everywhere. Oh. Yeah. So I, you, I, you're getting virtually buggered by AI priests. Well, you know, you think about it, God is AI. Oh, somebody says, Tracy says the Vatican already went broke and they're being run by Rothschild's money. Well, that's very interesting, Tracy. I'd that's, like to see some proof. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that's right interesting. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's still one of the single largest blocks of mind virus that you can get. And I mean, they do own tremendous amounts of very expensive real estate. They do. That's their ace in the hole. They have real estate. Lots, Lots of, of it. it. <laughs> Lots of you got your own freaking nation inside a sovereign nation. And just think about Wayne, if things really got bad, and they probably will as far as religion goes. The think of the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, and all of these great big Protestant churches, if they all pooled their religion or their their real estate holdings. They yeah. could probably survive a lot. When you were talking, I, I remembered what was it, two years ago, three years ago, when the Pope came in and he brought the chief uh, um, Inman, Iman, and the rabbi, Iman, yeah. And the, um, yeah, Iman, and they all met there in the garden, and they apparently signed a pact. Can I ask a simple question? Then who's God? Ooh. Well, if you have those. If it's the Jews, the Arabs, you know, wrong word, and the Catholics, it's all the same God. That's they just call him different things. That's what they're that's what they're saying, is but it? is that really a God or is it a Tolpe or an assemblage of Tolpe? Is it an extraterrestrial or is it just on World Mental Health Day mass insanity? It's a mass murder, is what it is. Yeah. I mean Do, do whether... you think, Wayne, that there is a alien being out there that's been masquerading as God? Yes. I think it's a, it's, it's either a virus or it's a frequency. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's a, an actual entity. personage entity? I think it's not a single entity. I think it's a collective. Oh, interesting. I don't think a single entity could ever handle this. Somebody, Anne Marie says, check George Cab Cabasillas. I can't, I can't, I don't remember how to pronounce his name. But interesting, he has a great view on the creator. I'll ask him that. He's coming on the show here in a, in a, a few days. So he has a, uh, and what's his view of the creator? I don't know, but it's a great one. <laughs> okay. That's I'll what Anne Marie that. Uber says. Listen, I, I wonder if Anne Marie's an Uber driver. You know. <laughs> oh, Wayne, speaking of Uber, 
I was in downtown Dallas and I had to get like a mile and a half from my hotel to Dealey Plaza. Is it Dealey Plaza or Daily? I thought it was Daily, but who knows? I thought it was too, but yeah. somebody told me it was Daily. But anyway, Dealey. So anyway, I had to get down there and I didn't really want to call Uber. So they have these um these scooters, Wayne, that are just sitting on the curb. And you download an app and you go up there and you use your phone, you unlock the scooter, and you ride the scooter. How and was I, it? I rode the scooter for like two miles there and back and it was so cool. And it cost me like maybe three bucks to ride the scooter for two miles. Well, it's definitely cost effective. It was pretty cool. I thought yeah. it'd be hard to ride, but it was easy. Yeah. And it was, I was even jumping off curbs and stuff by the end. Were you really? Absolutely. It was great. All right. But I guess they're in, I'm in most of the major downtowns. They are. Yeah. They're in fact, they've, I think they, they banned them in one city here. Um, too many people no were getting hurt. Yeah. Uh, scooters and pedestrians. And of course, you know, with scooters, when they try to cross the street, sometimes they don't think they have to obey the signals. And when they get hit by a car, the car is always going to win. Yeah. They think that they, they don't have to obey the trap. They think they have, for some reason, a person on a scooter <laughs> thinks they have the right of way over a 2000 pound vehicle. And you know, in, in Denver, the interesting phenomenon here, we have had year to date, I think close to 70 people hit by cars and died. Wow. Uh, in Denver, you as a pedestrian, you've really got to watch your butt. <laughs> Dude, uh, I saw a lady probably 70 years old in a dress, a purse over her shoulder, just blazing down the middle of the freaking street on one of these scooters. You know, nothing on but her pantyhose. And I thought, lady, if you go down, you may not get back up. But she's just blissfully blazing along. You're only as old as you think you are. That's, that's yeah, the but point. Man. And by the way, 70 isn't that old. You know, when you get to be 65, you look at it and you're going, hmm, well, that ain't bad. <laughs> that's true. But, dude, I mean, I was I – was, you're not allowed to ride him on the sidewalk in Dallas, but oh, you're was, not. No, oh, you have to oh. go on the street. But I was being very, I was pretending like I was riding a bike. I was being very. Do they have bike lanes or scooter lanes or? They had some, in some part, there were scooter lanes, but you're downtown. People are all over the place. Yeah. Wow. I don't care. That's why. That's a great that? idea. And I mean, it's probably takes a lot of money out of Uber's pocket, but I saw Wayne part of it. Um, what, there are actually um, Uber scooters. So Uber is advising. getting into the scooter business too. The analysts think that the Uber business model is doomed. Why is it doomed? Uh, it's unsustainable. Um, eventually, you know, you're seeing it already. We just had a major trial up here where an Uber driver shot a passenger. And, oh, nice. you know, you're, you – their their insurance that they're covering for rapes that they don't report in the news the sexual um violence that's taking place i mean you know there's no real clearing system to become an uber driver and <laughs> you know and you have to have a nice car I, and not even here. I've seen, you know, some of the news stories that this wasn't a nice car at all. <laughs> I mean, well, then know. why would you be dumb enough to get in it? Well, because with Uber, it's, it's virtually anyone, you know, you don't have to have a CVL. So that's one of the things we're talking to legislators. I like that though. I mean, I like that. It's a, it's a cool idea, but if you, I mean, you have to use some discretion if you're a person getting in a car, I mean, especially if you're a lady or a small person who can't defend themselves, why are you going to get in some car that's all busted up? Uh, it's, it's really odd. I mean, uh, what we're trying to lobby the state legislator here is, is that you can't simply have civilians just becoming suddenly taxi cab drivers. I have no problem with that, Wayne. I like that. Power to the people. Why not? Well, I get that. So then you're not to give your train. neighbor a ride down to the, to the grocery store. Yeah, but he's not paying me. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> well, so no, no. The point is, is that there should be some, at least some minimal training and some sort of background check that I, I say, no, I say, come on, dummies. Well, you Take know, care of your damn self, your mom's been teaching you since you were this high, not to talk to strangers. If you're going to get in a stranger's car, check them out a little bit. Don't let big, big government do it. Screw, screw this. 
Long live Uber. Uber. But what do you do when a woman is raped by an Uber driver? Well, she should have been more careful. Oh, come on, Jeffrey. You can't say that. What are you going to do if a, if a woman's friend drives her to the grocery store and she gets raped? You can't protect everybody from themselves, Wayne. They got to grow but, up and but be that's big a commercial boys and big girls. Enterprise. That's a, you're, you're separating apples and oranges. That's a commercial enterprise. Uber is a, tropically, a publicly traded company. They should have these standards put into their business model, and they don't. Well, we can hold – I don't have any problem holding Uber liable. Well, and that's what's happened. That's the reason why the analysts say that the business model is unsustainable. Dude, could you imagine how Ted Bundy would have loved Uber? Oh. <laughs> He'd been one hell of an Uber driver, Ted now Bundy. You're, you see, now you're on the other side of the fence. That's the oh, point. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm still saying protect yourselves, dummies. Yeah. Um, and Uber should at least have to do a basic background check. Wayne, you should sell them the background checks. Yeah, and someone said, well, what do you do when cops rape women? Yeah, you know, uh, but let me just say this, Emperor Rex, there is a process that for due prosecution on that. Um, yeah, I and, think they should have a uh, background check. That's fine. Yeah, I think that that's a minimum of that, you know, and again, you're, 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 you're hauling people. You got mm -hmm. them in the back of your car, uh, at least in the commercial test of some sort, you understand what happens. I mean, most of the thing that I get, they don't require the passengers to, seat, uh, to use the seatbelts. Again, grow up. Well, there's a, a Michigan Uber driver reporting in the chat room that they drive for Uber and Lyft, and they did have a background check. Interesting. Well, I guess maybe it's in different parts of different states. Cynthia says, arm yourself and learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as Dude, far if as you can't hit somebody in a car, you got problems. Well, now you bring up the good case for open carry. Oh, absolutely. You know, listen, if everyone got into the car that was you know, carrying, <laughs> you're going to have a very peaceful, pleasant conversation <laughs> because the driver's armed too. Yeah. I mean, why don't you just yeah. say, Hey, um, by the way, I am concealed carrying. So let's keep it on the straight and narrow bucko. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we live in a time. You know, I've always wished that I got hit on by the Uber driver. Maybe I'm different, <laughs> but I've always thought, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if the Uber driver hit on me? But. I, I've been trying for I years. Have to I've say never that been my thought. I have been trying for years. I've never been raped by an Uber driver. Well, Jeff, call it age, my friend. It I just, guess so. It just happens, you know. <laughs> and you know, it's anyway. funny. Every now and then you get recognized. Oh, you're the Christian whistleblower or something like that. Every now and then. But you never get recognized when you, you know, are, are trying to where it would help you. You'll, you always get your hands full of something. You're always in a hurry, but never when it would be helpful. But anyway, Tracy says you can't rape the willing. I guess that's true. <laughs> I have to say so. <laughs> I guess well, it's not rape, huh? I don't know. And we live in a time that again, I'm glad we didn't have the internet when I was growing up. Why? Uh, I think the internet uh, has taken the, there was a, uh, a Pew study that, get this, 80% of people they interviewed, they had a large mass sampling, have not made a new friend in five years. Who needs friends, Wayne? Yeah, you see, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've made several new friends in the last five years. In fact, but isn't it odd? All the friends I have have made in the last five years. So, um, you know, there was another study that says the millennials are the most isolated generation. You know? Somebody says, T Uber, tranny taxis, it's on the way. <laughs> Not touching that. That would and be interesting, wouldn't it? What would that? Just a tranny Uber. That would be interesting. You might, you know, sign up for that just to see who comes to pick you up. I don't know. I, I can well, what, think, think about it this way, Wayne. How is the tranny Uber driver going to chase you down with those stilettos? I think, again, if a person has to identify themselves by their sexuality, they need to expand their view of the world. I agree. Uh, I, agree. I, I just don't like the idea. I think that the taxi companies are basically shanghaiing us, sorry, Nigel, because they've got a, a, a racket and they can charge whatever they want. And now Uber and Lyft <clears throat> has changed all playing field and it has to be fair. I like that. Well, in many cities, you're absolutely right. New York City. 
I mean, certain number of cab companies, you know, get the mm -hmm. permits. Chicago, Philadelphia, we've all ride them. I used to be, you know, one of those guys that was always on the road traveling. And taxis are expensive. Yeah. And, and particularly when you get stuck in traffic heading to the Philadelphia airport and the meter is still running and you're not moving. Yeah. Yeah. I got no problem with Uber. I think people should take care of themselves. Use, um, you don't, if someone's going to offer you a ride to the grocery store, you're going to make sure that you can trust that person, but there should be background checks and liability for Uber. Well, I, when I travel, I use a private car service. I don't have to worry about that. So anyway, well, that's because you're an elitist Wayne. No, I'm not <laughs> just a smart guy. That's all. <laughs> Doesn't it cost a lot to have a private car? You know, it doesn't really when you look on it on a, uh, um, when you look and you uh, do the analysis on the cost. Um, in a private car, I am, I have my laptop there. I'm conducting business. I don't have to worry about the car itself. It's clean. Uh, I wear suits. And, you know, the last thing you want to do is sit into something else that someone left behind, you know. And, so uh, there's Are we back a lot. to tranny taxi again. It's just what I'm just saying. It's an environment that's conducive for business. And if you're traveling, you. downtime is unproductive time. You can't, you have, and literally in my spreadsheets in my company, you know, my downtime went on the books. Ooh, if you're afraid of Uber, call a taxi service. They're I there. Like it. Yeah, there's plenty of them. So again, like interesting it. conversation. I love the entrepreneurial spirit of it. Um, but you heard what happened in, I think it's in Hong Kong that the taxis have absolutely went on strike because they're trying to bring Uber in there and they're saying it's taking our livelihood away. Oh, really? Saturday, November 2nd at 1 PM is when I'll have George Cavasillas. Is that how you say his name? And what does George do? He is an author, a mentor, a public speaker, and he's from we are infinite dot love. We are infinite dot love. Okay. Yep. And he's currently, he, he just had a, he just had a five day seminar at Mount Shasta and is now heading to Rimrock near Sedona for another five day seminar. Five days. Yeah. Wow. And apparently he lives in Australia cause he's flying back to Australia. We are love. What? We are infinite dot oh. love. We are infinite dot. Okay. Uh, right. Rimrock. That's an interesting name. Huh. Rimrock. Yeah. Wasn't there a shootout up there? I don't know if there was or not. Isn't that, is that in Arizona? Yeah. It's right near, um, Sedona. Okay. And backing up her comments, Tracy Dyer has sent me a document detailing the Rothschilds loans to the Catholic church. 36.5 million pounds. That's a lot of money. Pounds? English pounds? Yeah. So that would be a pound is a dollar fifty in US currency. So you're talking that's fifty now it has to be fifty billion, right? And that was in eighteen thirty two. Oh, an eighteen thirty two million dollar. Oh yeah, well. so that's a lot. Well, of you money. do compounded interest and you know, they own their ass. And they do. <laughs> Now we know why they've got uh, their own uh, security forces because they're watching the bank. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I wonder how much those documents are worth that they say that they have down underneath the Vatican. Ooh, wouldn't that be something? How would you put a price on that? I don't know, but that's, yeah, they they really are priceless. Yeah. yeah, they are. I mean, <laughs> we can only speculate what's down there. You know, they are priceless. I saw this one um, video and it was all about the whole concept of Adam and Eve, you know, on the galactic scale. And I, I don't know, I, we were having dinner and I did, someone asked me about my belief about creation and about the Adam and Eve story. And I said, so again, was Adam a sapien? What, what, what was Adam? No one will answer that question. Was Adam a Neanderthal? Was he Cro Magna? Was he Denison? Who and what? I, I I would you know yeah if you have to, I've tried to get the geos on, but I don't know if they're Jesus up or what. They don't want to come on. Who's that? 
Chris and Jeff, it's Chris and Sherry Geo. I think they, I think they might be Jesus dub. I know that's why John B. Wells won't have me. <laughs> I'm still a pariah, Wayne. Oh, really? So you mean, you know, listen, Alex so Jones discrimin- won't have me. I think that's one of the reasons why you're discriminated against. Just like our kind have been throughout all mankind's yeah. history. I'm surprised I get on coast to coast. I really am. I, I have to ask George, what the hell is he thinking? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and now, now when you go uh, with like the alien con, I mean, you know, the word is getting out, man. You know, I was giving out my plastic Jesus stickers. I don't particularly have one, but I had a couple people hand them back. Oh, Did you no, really? I don't want anything that disgraces Jesus. I'm like, you had a freaking alien show, lady. <laughs> it's alien Jesus. You're at an alien show. It's good. It's mental health day. It's world <laughs> mental, health, mental day. health day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. But I did. Of course it was in Dallas, but I got a couple of looks. I bet do you, you believe, Do you believe in God? Yeah. Okay. I'll take it then. <laughs> do you believe in God? <laughs> but I didn't find any laying on the floor as I walked around. Ah, that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Yeah, yeah. When you find that it's not made the uh, collecting. Yeah, if it, if, it, yeah. if it doesn't even make it out of the hall, it's yeah. not a good deal. And you know, those things weren't free. I had to pay money on them. Well, and I, by the very definition, Jesus, if you believed him, he said, I am not of this world. So that means he's an alien. So take the sticker and shut up. Or you know don't. What they don't want to talk about the stickers want- free, but listening to you is not. Yeah, that's what I should have said. If they want to ask me about do I believe in Jesus and God, I'm going to say let's talk about the procreation of the Jesus. So what happened to that young girl? I mean, how did she get pregnant? And are you telling me then that nine, you- ten, eleven, twelve year old girl? You've way. got this invisible God that somehow or another puts semen in her vagina up her fallopian tubes to get her pregnant. How did that happen? He held her down. She was immobilized. Exactly. It was a rape. Just like with Eve. Just it's just Jesus is no better than an Uber driver. <laughs> God is no better than an Uber driver. Why no, is it the- God liable for rape? He raped. <laughs> Dude, your Jesus is the product of an extraterrestrial rape. I mean, that's what the it is. scripture says. He overpowered her, he immobilized her, and she came to herself with something from the Lord in her womb. You could call it a parasite. It was a parasite. I it mean, was like alien. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they don't want to talk about that part of Jesus. They don't want to talk about that part. No, 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 no. And and, and there's words for baby. They weren't used. There's words for infant. They weren't used. There's words for child. They weren't used. Thing. And a doctor wrote it. Luke. Luke. Thing. Thing. Something in her womb. A thing. A thing. Now, I'm from Texas. You call a thing. That ain't normal. If Jesus is your thing, that ain't normal. <laughs> dude, can you imagine this? It, that's, that's really the way it happened. But we don't want to talk about that. That's an alien abduction. It's a rape. And it was a rape. And, and, and somehow or another, now this parasitic thing became human. And even the Pope, although it's the Catholic Church is saying he didn't say it, but the Pope said, Jesus is not God. Jesus is a man. Well, he's not even a man. Yeah. He can't be a man. I don't know where my debates with Chris Putnam are. They must have taken them off the internet. Those were good debates. Who's Chris Putnam? Chris Putnam was the last Christian apologist with balls. Wow. Because he would actually debate me. We had a couple really good, um, friendly, gentlemanly, real debates. And unfortunately, he died very young, like 40, for, in his 40s. He died just suddenly. He'd been on coast to coast. Wow. And now none of these girly men will debate me anymore. Well, you know, the thing that I cannot understand. Because they don't want an ass whipping, Wayne. No, I'm they saying. don't. They just they don't, don't want none of this. <laughs> they just don't want to embarrass themselves. Um, you know, I keep on saying, so the Judaic belief system is that what man was created in what, 3450? 
BCE, I think. Once a few years between friends, Wayne. Exactly. But the problem is we have the Sumerian tablets that are 2,000 years older than that. Yeah. And again, I want to know who the Jewish people are talking about. Is this Adam a homo sapien? Is it a sapien sapien? What is it? Because you don't, you, and here's the thing. The video I did, Two Creations, Two Worlds. No one ever explains to me what happened to the six-day people. It says in their own Bible that they had no fault, no sin. Where did these beings go? They're in our chat room. <laughs> so un, not only do, and you know, we can't figure out why the priests are raping children. We can't figure out why the preachers are raping children. The God that started the whole thing raped a 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old girl. Yeah. What uh, don't you understand? Can we get real, real here? If you take the whole Israelite story, the children of Israel, I suggest you go um, to the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Joshua as well, and you will see that it was permissible to take young girls young girls who young girls folks and they were they were put into the slave trade for the the israelite soldiers basically to take their passions out on it's a culture that has been transferred into this yeah that's why they're never going to get rid of child abuse in christianity because it is part and parcel of the religion and it's no, no, and it's no surprise that it's it's through Islam and Judaism too. It's the same God, it's the same God. It's Baal, the it's, same God. You know, if you want to take the thing that Baal was, you know, uh, Jehovah's brother, you know, um, all right. But the fact is, this the Moloch, the sacrificing of innocent children. The Israeli culture was predicated on that. That's what they did. Did somebody really just type in the chat room, little girls were more mature back then? Oh, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. I mean, that ain't cool. That's not cool. <laughs> That's not cool, man. <laughs> That's not even rational, dude. <laughs> or do that. I don't know who wrote it, but... Uh, you know, but this it is, is so what we funny look. when they, you're an Anna atheist, you're an animal. I hope you burn in hell and bless you. <laughs> yeah, bless you. They always end that with Peace. bless you. Yeah. Well, that's all right. I'm bringing some filet mignons and baked potatoes. And so come on, we're going to have a big cookout. Listen, the, the whole point, let's just talk about hell. If it existed, it's going to be far more populated than their heaven. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Hell has enlarged itself, the Bible says. So, I haven't heard about any expansion of heaven. Have you? If Satan is God's enemy and he has an army bigger than God's because God is putting the recruits in there, what makes you think they're not going to form a union? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And if this God <laughs> created everyone and it's just a small few that are actually going to find the true path, that sounds like a failure of a God. Most people he made are going to hell. What kind of a God is that? That's a broke-ass God. I wouldn't want to be in that. You know, talk about a group of racist bigots. I mean, that's what you got. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> By God, I tell you, those poor bastards, we told them all along, you know? So it's going to be you and what? Your friends? Five, How six? people believe this for 2,000 years? Smart people. Because they put it. you to death. <clears throat> you know, it's the same thing Not with Not anymore, Islam. Wayne. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, um, they haven't killed us yet. Not yet. <laughs> but we don't know what list we're on either. That's um, true. I mean, you look about what Saudi Arabia is doing. I mean, they're crucifying people. I mean, uh, for professing Christianity, for violating Islam. You know. Wow. Um, my conversation I had with uh, Ed Meese former U.S. Attorney General under Ronald Reagan. His biggest fear, as he told me, and he, he's on up in age now, that was the invasion of Sharia law into the United States. Yeah. And uh, it's happening. 
if you, I, I just don't, I don't see that way. And I know that people talk about it, but you'd have to literally change the U S constitution. And that's not easy to do. Since when is a constitution any means to stop anyone? You got a presidential candidate out there saying, yeah, I'm going to take your guns. And if you resist, then we're going to arrest you. And the same candidate said that what? he would jerk the um, tax exempt status of any church that didn't recognize gay marriage. Yeah. So now we're taking you away. You can't do that. That's called the First Amendment. First Amendment, Second Amendment, it doesn't mean, and that's why I'm saying. And Wayne, let yes. me be the first to wish you happy Columbus Day tomorrow. Oh, That's um, very politically incorrect. Well, I'm going to fly a flag that Columbus was out there. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. So we live in very interesting times. And how you about do. the... Uh, May you live in interesting times. Who said that? Uh, wasn't it, um, who was the famous poet, um, author? Come on, folks. Who uh, we're consulting the Oracle. Oh uh, yeah. Go to the Oracle. She'll May know. you live in interesting times. The Thoreau? Thoreau? No. Um, who said it? May you live in interesting times. It is the purport. It's the translation of a traditional Chinese curse. Really? Interesting. So the Chinese are like, ah, oh, may you live in interesting may times. In and interesting straight eye around eye. Oh, I see what it is. It's like, ah, screw you in Chinese. Yes. You think we'd be nice, we say, screw you. You go now. So well, we found out how important China is where the NBA is concerned. But there is no actual Chinese source ever been produced. And it has been deduced from the analysis of the late 19th century speeches of Joseph Chamberlain. Joseph Chamberlain. Uh, I've got it here in Chinese, if you want to see it. <laughs> Chamberlain was a uh, prime minister, wasn't he, of England during the... Um... Better to be a dog in a peaceful time than to be a human in a chaotic period. Well, that's uplifting. That's yeah. Wow. Well, I'm what, almost uh, afraid I asked. <laughs> you see, you learn things here, folks. Ay, 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 ay. But I like living in interesting times. Why would you want to live in boring times? I don't know. The deep state kind of does freak me out a little bit. These guys are nuts. Somebody and, uh, says that Mindy says Columbus gets blamed for millions of native American deaths. He never killed anyone. Well, there was that little thing of the disease that he came over that ravaged throughout the populations and killed tens of thousands. So, so can I just bust this whole myth up? You might want to include that. So here's the thing that amazes me in the mainstream thought about Columbus. Ladies and gentlemen, no one ever talks about the three <laughs> other ships that carried Jewish refugees. Where did they disembark and where did they set up camp? Were we talking about the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria? No, sir. We're talking the other ships that followed those three. There was other ships? Yes, sir. Read the uh, hope and the glory, the light and the glory. Uh, where did they go, Wayne? They went to Florida. Flo <laughs> Miami? <laughs> they wanted a good Boca. wine. They wanted a good wine. I want to go to Miami, but no, um, no, they actually settled along. Uh, what is their thinking is, is that whole coast there in Florida. Wow. Interesting. So no so one were the he, Spanish just trying to get rid of them. Well, it was during the Spanish inquisition. The Jews were under oh. uh, assault. They were being thrown out of the country by King Ferdinand. No kidding. They were confiscating their merchant stores, their treasuries. Uh, and so it was the Jews who paid for the, the queen only paid for one ship. Oh, so the Jews paid to be able to get out of there. To get out of Spain. Oh, But wow. yet history will not tell you where those other ships went. Wow. That's interesting. You know what the Jews said? What? This was the new Jerusalem. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, it is, uh, Miss Space. I never Cake. heard of that one. Yeah, check it out. It's probably one of the greatest mysteries because you have no accounting 
what happened to those other ships? Interesting. They'd completely fall off of history. You know what and they, they say, were Wayne, Jews. They say, well, I never been to Spain, Spain. <laughs> but I kind of like the Beatles. Wow. All right. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> so there was three other ships, huh? Yeah, there was three other Jesuit ships. Jesuit cruise lines. <laughs> that was the first <laughs> Jewish-filled cruise. But no one ever accounts for those missing Jews. So were they bad? Were they like, I wonder what the conditions they were They were like. wealthy. They Somebody were very. Says they all settled in the villages. If you're a Floridian, <laughs> you know that's really funny. Um, it's, it's very interesting. And I haven't found anyone. But Tracy who, says they never came to America. I don't know about that. I don't either. Um, the story is, is that Columbus went this way. They went that way. Hmm. And if you look on it, it, if you went that way, that would put you up along the keys up in that area. Interesting. And they've been there ever since. Well, I can't find them in history. It's the interesting thing. They're, they're, the ships are recorded, but when we get with uh, in... Um, Tracy says Columbus never came to America. I understand what she is saying. Let's just I say don't. the new world. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you have to. What do you get... think the conditions were like on those ships? Sailing back then was not fun. Well, if the Jews paid for it, they must've probably had the, as good as, as stuff as they could have. Yeah, it wasn't that... like flying on Kenneth Copeland's jet, but no, no. But again, it's a part of history that um, you won't see discussed. Interesting. I mean, we get Plymouth rock, We've got, you know, the whole thing down in, uh, you know, Havana and that area down there. But yeah, anyway. You know, Malcolm X was right, Wayne. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. It's a fact. Yeah. And then you got the whole, it, it, it's, it's odd how history does not record what history really is. Somebody says, was it Columbus a Jew asking for a friend? He was, wasn't he? Wasn't Columbus Jewish, crypto Jew? Maybe. I mean, wow. the light and the glory was the one that uh, where the Jewish merchants, the, the, the people that the ones who were paid for this, the queen, the, Spain was going broke. Wow. Was Columbus Jewish? Hmm. Well, myjewishlearning.com seems to think so. <clears throat> that's interesting. There's more to Maybe this that's story. That's why he wanted to get the hell out of there too. Yeah. There's more to this story than what, um, people have ever thought about. Again, so here's a question, Wayne, Cynthia L's in the chat room saying, I used to live in Clearwater. It's heaven on earth. And my question is, why the hell am I in Kansas? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, these are the questions that are above my pay grade. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, so here we go. Columbus was Jewish. He's carrying Jewish, not, not refugees. These are wealthy merchants. These are very smart people. And yet we never find out where they settle, what happened to them. Nothing on the records, nothing on the manifest, nothing. Yeah. Crazy. It's weird. Crazy, crazy. And stuff. they were coming to the new world to find and establish the new Jerusalem. Oh, how about that? So how who about knew? that? And it would make sense. I mean, uh, the, the Muslims had basically occupied uh, what is now modern day Israel. So yeah. they would have no ability to go back. They'd already been in exile for nearly, you know, a millennia and a half. The new world represented the first true escape form well it's an interesting world we do live in interesting times yes we do so <laughs> we live in interesting <clears throat> times and i kind of like living in interesting times well it makes getting up really interesting here you go what's going to happen today yeah good things yes. all righty then wayne this has been fun this has, has been, been exciting fun. i always like these uh uh, get together. So I have to say they are exciting, stimulating, great it's mind tough. coitus. 
Yeah. Sometimes you pretend to be normal. Is that what your shirt says? Yeah. And then I find out that it's just boring. It is boring. <laughs> it is. See, you know, nobody ever said, I, I hope that you live in normal times. You know, my wife said that the best thing about being married to a person who is esotrentic, esotrent, I can't even say the word now. Um, <laughs> um, what's I think the word? You mean esoteric, but there's a no, no, word. no, no, no. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, folks? Esoteric? Uh, no. Um, I'll think of it here in a second. <laughs> All right. I'll figure it out. I know she's out there looking at me. Eccentric? Eccentric. Thank you. That's why yeah. esocentric. Yeah. yeah. Kind of mix the two. Yeah. Get the two words together. So what's a good thing about being married to it's someone It's always that's stimulating. Yeah. It's never boring. And it is World Mental Health Day. Yeah. Well, you have a good one, my friend. <laughs> How I've uh, given up on my mental health long ago. Uh, it's overrated. Mental health eccentric. is overrated. Yes, Cindy. I got it. Eccentric. Eccentric. Yes. Mental health is overrated. It always is. If you're in a, if, if you are not considered crazy in this world today, then you really are. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All right, Wayne. Nice to see you. Oh, Jeffrey. It's been great. Thank well, you, my I, friend. I think it's pancake time again. Oh, oh, we're doing oatmeal today. Oatmeal. Yes. Yes. What'd you do? Get in trouble? No, no. We just occasionally like uh, oatmeal. And so we make the slow cook oatmeal. You know, it takes about 20 minutes and raisins in there, a little bit of brown sugar, you know, a little cinnamon. Some nuts? She, uh, Lynn likes nuts. I don't. That's, that's good in oatmeal. Yeah. That's why I eat most days. So that's why pancake day is so special. You know, today we're doing oatmeal. Oh, Twisted Isby loves grits. I like grits too. Grits are good. Grit are good. Yeah. yeah. Had oatmeal and oatmeal. chocolate whey. That's good. Pumpkin, pumpkin. oatmeal. Hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, pumpkin's way overrated. The um, but I do like it that way. That that's no pumpkin for me. Yeah, that's good stuff, buddy. You can put a lot of good stuff in oatmeal, and yeah. you can also put a lot of bad stuff in oatmeal too. Just yeah. saying. Yeah, you know, kind of keep the balance. Yeah, you got to keep the balance. I got to, you know, I am the contrarian, so I got to throw some contrarian stuff out there. Uh, you're a good man, my friend. You're a good man. Thanks, Wayne. I always soak my oatmeal, cook it in milk. I love mm. grits and barnyard eggs, bacon pancakes, French barnyard toast, eggs. oatmeal mm -hmm. cookies. You know, if you're raising chickens, those at least you know where they're coming from. Exactly. That's pretty cool. You know, it's weird. I just thought about this. I haven't eaten meat in like two months and it just sort of happened. Well, I feel good. That's cool. I do eat fish. Yeah. We start, I've started eating fish occasionally. Make sure it's a uh, farm raised. Now I want that straight from Fukushima fish. Yeah. <laughs> kind of glow. That's, that. I, that's my, that's mine. That way I can, I don't even have to have a flashlight at night. I can just hold my hand out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being Jesus. I guess it would be also, I guess, a form of taking chemotherapy, right? I mean, if they're putting radiation in you, well, if you eat the fish that are already radiated. Ooh, you know. biscuits and gravy. Yeah, my wife is. Hard a to be biscuits that. and gravy. Yeah. Your wife isn't from the South. She doesn't know how to make biscuits and gravy. Come oh, on. Oh, she's from Indiana, and yes, she does. She'll argue with you. She, oh, man. She makes some. Nobody made biscuits like my nanny made biscuits. Yeah, well, that's a matter of opinion, but. We can go gravy. With come on now. You got to come from the South. No. Oh. <laughs> All, right, All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> um, we're getting out of control here. All right. This has been fun. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Wayne, it's been a pleasure. Everybody in the yeah. chat room has been a pleasure. And once again, happy world mental health day and happy early Columbus day. I love it. <laughs> and with that, Get out of here and go do something productive, all you people. Quit watching YouTube all day. There you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey. Bye-bye.